Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillahi na'maluhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi antusina wa min sayyiati a'amalina Ma yahdihillahu falamudhillalahu wa ma yudhillil falahariyalah Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallahu wahdahu la sharika lah Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh arusalahu bilhaqqi bashiran wa nadhira wa da'iyan ilallahi bi'idhnihi wa sirajan munira Amma ba'du faqad qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fil Qur'an al-Majid A'udhu billahi minal shaytan wajim Wa yuthabbitu Allahu al-lazina amanu bil qawli al-thabit Fil hayati al-dunya wa fil akhirah Wa yuthillu Allahu zalimina wa yaf'alu Allahu ma yashah We begin by saying all praises due to Allah we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the opportunity of coming to the masjid. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the life that he has given to us and that he has protected us in so many different ways from the harms of this dunya. Every single human being throughout his life goes through difficulties and hardships. And the Muslim is no different. We always go through different phases in which we have to face adversity of one kind or the other. But the believer is someone who has something that he can rely upon in the face of this adversity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to that in this verse of the Quran that I recited which is from Surah Ibrahim, Surah number 14, verse number 27, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps firm those who believe with the قول الثَّابِتِ, the firm word. He keeps those who believe firm with the firm word. And the, the Mufassireen have said that the firm word here refers to لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا Allah. That there is no one worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That makes a person a believer with Muhammad Rasulullah and the messengership of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And his belief and his faith is what keeps him going through this adversity. And gives him the qualities that are required to be successful in this world. And in the hereafter, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fid hayatid dunya, in this life, wa fil akhirah, and in the hereafter, and some of the scholars say, fil akhirah refers to in the grave, that his belief in this world is what protects him from the torment of the grave. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah sends astray the wrongdoers, and Allah does what he wills. In the verses before this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about a good word as well. And he makes the parable of a good word being like a good tree. And the scholars and the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was referring to the date palm tree. And in many times in the Holy Quran, and in many of the ahadith of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we see analogies that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger bring with creations that surround us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks many times in the Holy Quran about the sun and the moon and the wind and the clouds and the water, the sea. And many, many creations of Allah are mentioned. The animals plants, the mountains, because these are things that we observe all of the time. These are things that we live with and we can relate to them and we know how they move and how they act and we know what they stand for. We know what a mountain is, we know what a mountain does or what it doesn't do. And therefore when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings an analogy comparing the believer to something that the believer can identify with, 
it is as a means as well of us trying to see within ourselves how much of that standard have I become? How do I stand up against that standard? That Allah says about this, about the mountain, they are like this, or about the sun, or about the moon, or about the animals that he mentions in various verses of the Quran. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself made reference to the believer being like a dead palm tree. In, in, in the verse of the Quran in Surah Ibrahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, a good word is like a good tree. Firm roots, branches reaching up high. And the reference is to the same dead palm tree. And in a hadith narrated by Abdullah bin Umar, and he says that I was with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while he was eating fresh dates. So he was obviously by a tree eating fresh dates. And he said, from the trees, there is a tree which resembles a faithful believer. From the trees, so here the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is bringing on another analogy. That the believer can liken himself to a tree, a creation of Allah. And that he says that there is a tree which resembles a faithful believer. In a similar narration, he says, according to Abdullah bin Umar, that there is a tree among trees, the leaves of which do not wither. And that is like a Muslim. And he says, tell me which tree can that be? Abdullah bin Umar says, I wanted to say it was the date palm, but I was the youngest among them, so I kept quiet. Out of respect for the elder companions around him. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it is the date palm tree. This hadith is found in Sahih al-Bukhari and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is comparing the believer to a tree. Obviously, this would mean that there must be attributes of a tree like this that the believer should have. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that a good word is like a good tree, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in this verse that a good word is that which keeps you, Allah keeps those who believe firm with a good word, and that good word is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, then there are attributes about this tree that bring firmness that the believer should have in his life as well, to bring firmness against adversity. So one of the attributes of the dead palm tree is in fact how firm and strong it is. It is one of those few trees that can grow successfully in very difficult conditions. Most dead palm trees grow where there is very little water, in very hot conditions, in the desert, yet they grow successfully and they produce a lot of dates for people to eat. In fact, they have recorded that a date palm tree can live up to 150 years. And every year after the 48 years it takes to grow up, and begin to bear, it can bear about 300 pounds of dates, one tree per year. Even in growing up 48 years and taking time, there is a lesson as well for us as Muslims that the firmness that we need to have as believers against adversity doesn't come immediately, but it takes time. And it takes effort, and the effort that people will make to bring up that tree, make that tree become, until it becomes a tree that is bearing, is one where they will put all of the necessary nutrients to make it strong and firm. And this is a lesson for us as well in terms of our own children, and those amongst us with whom we have some influence, that we must make them strong so that when their time comes, they are like a dead palm tree, ready to face the adversity. This strength 
we see in the trees is a strength we need to have as believers. And just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making that observation for us, allowing us to make that observation in life, we can see as well when adversity comes, like for example right now with this tropical storm, many of you would have already seen videos of, about the trees swaying, swaying in the winds in Barbados. Have you seen the, the, the palm trees there? They're not date palm trees, but they're the same genera. The date palm. And you see how they sway, but they don't break. They will come back up again. That's an analogy that we should have as well as believers, that if we are to be like the date palm tree, then we must be able to take some adversity. And perhaps the adversity may bend us. Perhaps the bending is good. Because sometimes if you stand up to a force without bending, you are unable to stand for long. But by bending, you are able to withstand that force and then recover and stand up again. So firmness is very important for the believer, as it is for the tree to be able to withstand the difficulties that it faces in the arid conditions, for example, without water, or in the case of a storm or a hurricane or strong winds. Strong roots, strong trunks, strong leaves. And therefore the believer as well should be strong. And in another hadith, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Al-mu'minul qawiyyu khayru wa habbu ila Allah min al-mu'mini dhaifi. That the strong believer is better and more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the weak believer. And in everyone there is goodness, meaning because everybody cannot be as strong as everybody else. So it doesn't mean you look down on somebody who's not as strong as you, but they should look up to those who are stronger and aim to be strong as well. And the strength, of course, is physical strength. And this has so many implications about how we should live our lives, what we should eat and drink as well to keep ourselves strong and healthy. But it is also about mental strength. It is about being able to withstand issues that come up in your life that might lead a weaker person to depression or suicide or committing some act of violence. But the believer is able to have patience. That is why the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that the strong person is not the one who is able to overcome his enemy. But the strong person is that one who is able to have patience during difficulties and adversities. So it's not just physical strength, it's also mental strength. And spiritual strength as well. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to test our metal to see whether or not we believe. And if we believe, how much do we believe? That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that He has created death and life so that He may test which ones of us are better in deeds, not in best in the number of deeds, but best in the quality of the deeds. So it's not just about having Iman, but it's how much effort you put in that Iman, and how strong that Iman becomes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test us as well to make our Iman stronger. And for us to know as well how weak our Iman is. Because we may very well be going along thinking, you know, I am strong in faith, but it's only when you are tested then you know how strong you really are. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He tests us, He will bless us for our attitude towards those tests as well. In one hadith narrated by Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala, and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He said, Qaribu. Seek closeness 
closeness to Allah and be steadfast. And in all that afflicts the believer, there is an atonement. Even a thorn that pricks him and the hardship that he suffers from the pain of that being pricked by a thorn, there is atonement and kafaratun from that. That Allah will forgive him from sins because of his patience during that event and that episode. And of course, we as human beings and as Muslims, we face pain and suffering way beyond the pricking of a thorn. But even in that, there is some consolation from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a hadith narrated by Mus'ab ibn Sa'd He narrated from his father that a man said to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O Messenger of Allah, which of the people are tested the most? Who are going to get the most severe tests? And the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the Anbiya Alaihi Salam. The prophets and then the nearest to them. And then those nearest to them, meaning nearest to them, not biologically, although that may also be included in some instances, but nearest to them in behavior, nearest to them in actions, to the Anbiya alayhi salam, nearest to them in obedience. He said that a man is tried according to his deen. A man is tested by Allah according to his deen. If he is firm in his deen, then his trials will be more severe. Subhanallah. Not everybody who is firm in deen will be tested. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may test those who are firm in their deen for them to know how firm their deen really is. And for them to get even closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a favor from him, Allah, to them. A man is tested according to his deen. If he is firm in his deen, then his trials are more severe. And if he is frail and weak in his religion, then he is tested according to his strength. So he may feel that he is only given small tests by Allah. And this is because his iman is strong. But rather this may be because Allah knows he cannot withstand a difficult trial and a difficult test. But the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that the servant shall continue to be tested until he is left walking on the earth without sins. Allah may decide to test him in all different ways. And some tests may be easy to deal with and some tests may be difficult. Right now, yesterday, many of our students wrote the SEA exam. And for them, that was the most difficult test they ever faced in, faced in their lives. But we who would have passed that, I might have felt the same way at that time, will know that as time goes by, there will be more tests to face. Bigger exams to write. More things depending on it. More effort required. And we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses all of them and gives them success in this test. The SEA students, the CSEC students, the CAPE students, all the students who are writing whatever kinds of exams. The second quality that we see in the tree that we can emulate as human beings and as Muslims, is that it's not just a tree that goes up in the desert, but it's a tree that is beneficial. Everybody knows about dates and how it is a sunnah of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to break his fast with dates and how dates are some of the best nutritionally equipped foods in the world. And how even certain kinds of dates, like the Ajwa dates, have qualities to protect a person from evil and diseases. And therefore, this tree produces something that is beneficial, but it's not just dates. So many other things come from the tree. Timber, rope. They use the seeds of the date 
as feed for livestock. They burn the timber, they build with it, they burn it to make fuel as well. So many different things. Both alive and dead, the tree is a benefit. And therefore, similarly, when a Muslim is alive, he should ask himself, am I a benefit to anyone? Do I benefit people? The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in one hadith, that the most beloved people to Allah are those who are most beneficial to people. The most beloved people to Allah are those who are most beneficial to people. And the most beloved deed to Allah is to make another believer happy or to relieve him from distress or to pay back a loan on his behalf or to remove his hunger. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Indeed, for me to walk with your brother and see to his needs is more beloved to me than to perform the spiritual seclusion in a mosque, i'tikaf, in the Prophet's mosque, in Medina, the second holiest place in the world, for the entire month, for an entire month. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying that better than that, i'tikaf in the Prophet's masjid, for an entire month is to help a believer, to be of, help a person, to be of benefit to them. And therefore, just like that tree is of all kinds of benefit, and it benefits different people in different ways, the man with the animal can tie his camel to the tree, the man who is walking in the desert can get shade from the tree, the man who is hungry can get dates from the tree, the man who's looking for food for his animals can use the seeds. The man who's looking for rope can get vines from the tree to tie, to make into rope, to weave into rope. The man who's looking for something to build with can cut the timber, cut the trunk and get wood to build. So many different kinds of benefits. What kind of benefit do we give? Because Part of being of benefit is not being of harm. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, La dharara wa la dhirar. This is such a comprehensive statement from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that it forms one of what is known as the five maxims of fiqh. In other words, fiqh in Islamic law is based on five principles. And one of the principles is this. That your life is not about causing harm. Your life is about causing benefit and bringing benefit. And from that laws are derived and principles are derived. About punishment even and retribution. Because of this principle and maxim that came as a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And therefore, we have to ask ourselves, La dhara, that there is no causing of harm. Are we such people who cause harm to others? That we wrote a letter that caused harm to other people and destroyed their reputation. That we sent a text message or a WhatsApp message or we lied and slandered their name and we caused harm to them or we physically cause harm to them, or we stole from them, or it was a relationship that I was with them, and the relationship failed, and now I'm posting intimate pictures of that person on, 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 on YouTube, or on the internet, or on Instagram. Or I am saying things to cause harm. This is going against the believer. This is going against belief. You cannot be a Muslim if your deliberate actions are meant to cause harm to people, to cause harm to other Muslims especially. La dharara, no causing of harm. And this as well, this is such a, a wide topic that this hadith is a khutbah by itself or many khutbahs by themselves. 
Because it also includes do not cause harm to yourself. And therefore it's against the principles of Islam that a believer will be taking illegal drugs. Using marijuana or cocaine or heroin and causing harm to himself. Or doing things that bring hardship upon himself or bring injury upon himself. That you have a problem with your eyes but you are staring at the screens all day and making your eyes worse. This is haram. Because you are causing harm and the hadith says, La darara, do not cause harm even to yourselves. Do not bring yourself into harm. Do not put yourself in harm's way. And similarly, Wala dhirar, do not reciprocate harm. And subhanAllah, there's so much in this, these two words. Because it also shows that in Islam, Islam is not a religion or a way of life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us where a person will always subject himself to harms of others. You know, there are some religions that say when you get slapped, turn the other cheek. But this is not Islam. In Islam, you are allowed by the process of law to get retribution for what harm was done to you. But a hadith says, La dhirara, don't go overboard with that harm that you may cause to a person. And that's why the Jewists have come up with laws. What is the law for this? What is the punishment for this? What is the limit of the punishment? This is why there are laws of Qisas that come from the Holy Quran. That a person does this, this is the retribution. It is not that, you know, in Islam, you could destroy my character and I must stay quiet because I am a Muslim. No, 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 no. But my Retribution is also with limits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set. So there is no reciprocating of harm without any, you know, limits at all. Somebody pass and give you a bad drive and then you go and you burn down their house. No, subhanAllah. That's wrong. But maybe you might be able to make a report to the police that he is driving recklessly. Something like that. But it also doesn't, the hadith also doesn't tell us, do not ever think that you ca do not have the opportunity for retribution as well. You do within the limits of the law. But the harm that you may want to do on somebody, not only should it be excessive beyond what they did to you, but the, the, the hadith is also saying, don't harm yourself in the process of reciprocating harm. Don't make that now your focus in your life so that you stop doing any good and you're only thinking about the harm that you could do as a retribution for the harm that was done to you. Subhanallah. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying this word that makes the believer firm is the word of belief. La ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah. Because it makes that believer recognize and realize that his first and most important task is the bringing of benefit and the being of benefit to others. Both while he's alive and just like the tree when it's even dead, you can use it for timber and you can do all kinds of things with it. That is why we must also live our lives in such a way that when we die, we can still be of benefit. Sarakajaria. Like the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said, whosoever builds a mosque in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will build for him in the hereafter. It doesn't mean he has to fork out five million dollars to build a mosque. But any contribution he does towards that, he gets the reward in the hereafter. If he gives a student a Quran and the student reads the Quran, he gets the reward in the, in the hereafter. If he does something that people are benefiting from, he helps to dig a well. He pays to dig a well or he digs the well himself. And people get water from that well. This is a sadaqah jariah for him. 
And of course, what better Sadaka Jaria is there than your own children becoming such people who are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that they pray for you, that's a sort of source of blessings. Their own obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a source of blessings. And inshallah, they pass that on to their children and their children and their children as well. So that for generations, there are muqtadis and obedient servants of Allah coming from what you have done. And that's a salaka jariya for you as well. So, so much we should do to be a benefit in this life while we are alive to those around us and a benefit even after we have died because we have left things that people benefit from and that our souls are benefiting from as well because they are saraka jariya. And the final quality that we could look at that the tree has is the beauty that it brings. And I have myself personally have seen in Saudi Arabia places where the place is all desert. And when they turn that place into a, like an oasis, they plant hundreds of date palm trees. They could have chosen other kinds of trees as well, but because that tree is a strong, firm tree that we can withstand the, the arid conditions, they plant these date palm trees in these oases. And they look so beautiful. It brings a sense of pleasure, of calmness, of comfort to see a beautiful date palm tree swaying in the wind with its bunches of dates, different kinds of dates and different kinds of palms. And this is what we learn from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well. That his behavior and his character was very, very important to pass on to the ummah. For example, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she reports, she says in a hadith, Ma ra'aytu ahadan kana ashbaha. I have never seen anyone more ashbaha like the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in regard to Gravity, meaning in regard to his seriousness, his looking at matters with importance, his not being frivolous about things. I've never seen anyone like the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in respect, more like the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in respect of this quality of gravity and the quality of calm deportment, being calm and having proper deportment and in the quality of pleasant disposition, the quality of being such a person who is unruffled, easily unruffled, who is rough around the edges, who is someone who will curse, who will shout and scream and become violent and become hostile. Aisha anha is saying, I have never seen anyone more like the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in respect of gravity, calm deportment and pleasant disposition than Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, than his daughter Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. Karam Allahu wajha, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honor her face. Therefore, therefore, this hadith is telling us two things. One is that these are the qualities that they notice about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That he wouldn't take your serious matter as a joke. He wouldn't take serious things in a joking manner. He would be level-headed about things. That he would have a good disposition towards people. He wouldn't treat them as lesser individuals. He would treat them with honor. He wouldn't scorn them. And he wouldn't speak and behave in a manner unbecoming of somebody who has been refined by Islam. 
by the etiquettes of, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us through the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that he would have passed these qualities on to his children, to his daughter Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. And by extension, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, his wife is noticing this. So she will adopt these qualities herself and this will pass on. And this is, these are the qualities that as parents, we should pass on to our children. And as Muslims, we should pass on to the ummah. As leaders, we should pass on to the muqtadis. As husbands, we should pass on to our wives. As fathers, as parents, even as children, pass it on to our parents if they don't have those qualities as well. Because at the end of the day, when you look at that tree, that date palm tree, that stands up majestically, not just does it exude beauty and give shade, it's a source of benefit, but it's a source of strength. And similarly, the believer must ex exude beauty in the way that he dresses, in the way that he speaks, in the way that he keeps himself, how he cuts his nails or cuts his hair, how he speaks to people, how he walks even, everything about him must show honor and chivalry and calmness and authority because we are guided by the tenets of deen and Islam and firmness and firmness especially in adversity especially in a time like this where people around us are dying and people need us people need us to be strong our neighbors need us to give them a comforting word our children need us so that they could lean on us. Our parents need us for a support and a helping hand. Our relatives need us for a hamper or for some goodness or some good word. And people who need us, we must be there as believers for them to lean on us. Just like that dead palm tree, you can lean on it. It won't fall. You can get shade from it. It will shade you from the blistering sun and the rain and you can get benefit from it as well. And for ourselves as well, just as that tree throughout its life will go through difficult stages where there was not enough water, where there was too much water, where there was not enough sun, where there was too much sun in our own lives, we are also going to be tested because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us Do the people think that they will be left to say we believe? That we say that word that makes us firm in this life and in the grave and in the hereafter. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And you won't be tested. As to whether really you've, hold on, you've held on to that firm word and how firm are you holding on to it and what is the extent of your belief and do you really believe? SubhanAllah, we're going to be tested. And just like the date palm tree, we have to be strong. We might sway, but we must never break. Akulu kawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'il muslimina min kulli dhamb. فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم